Ratio and Proportion, Part 1. Hi, I'm Daniel Sousa and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is Part 1 on Lecture on Ratios and Proportions. Alright, now to understand ratios, let us keep two people. We have Mr. A and we have Mr. B. Suppose Mr. A has rupees 10, right? 10 rupees. And Mr. B has 20 rupees. Right? Now, ratio is basically a fraction. So you're basically saying, what is A by B, right? Mr. A by Mr. B. Alright, so here you will get 10 by 20. Now, it is also related to the HCF. Now, HCF is your highest common factor. Now, I'll make a separate tutorial on HCF and LCM later. But as of right now, just understand this. So what you do is you break this up into its factors. So one is a factor, two is a factor, five is a factor, and 10 is a factor. Here you will have one, you will have two, you will have four, you will have five, 10, and 20, right? So highest common factors, factors you've got all of them. Now, which is common among all of these? You have one, two, 10, one, two, five, and 10, one, two, five, and 10, right? Now, out of these 1, 2, 5, and 10, which is the highest one? 10. So 10 is your HCF. So now, to find the most simplified version of this, the ratio, you need to divide it by the HCF. So 10 by 10 is to 20 by 10. So it comes out to be 1 is to 2. So basically, what this ratio is saying, that whatever Mr. A has, Mr. B has twice of that. Now, it doesn't matter if A had 40 rupees and B had 80 rupees or A had 33 rupees and B had 66 rupees. It would still come down to 1 is to 2, right? Similarly, if I divided 10 by 2, right, I would get 5. And if I would divide 20 by 2, I would get 10. 5 is to 10 is still 1 is to 2. So that implies that if you have a ratio A is to B, if you multiply, say, X, some number, on both the sides, it remains the same. Or if you divide the number Y on both the sides, it's the same. So in general, x a by y is, is to x b by, by y is the same as a is to b. So all of these are the same. So when simplifying ratios, you will need to multiply sometimes or divide sometimes. Just know that all of these are the same. All right, now that you know what ratios are, let's look at what are proportions. Now, a ratio will be a is to b. A proportion basically is the equality of two ratios. So suppose you have another ratio, c is to d, and you say that both of these are equal to each other, that is a proportion. Now, the accepted notation for this is what you must have seen in many textbooks. You will see this A, B, you'll have four dots here, C, D. Now, how I remember it is two, two dots signify two words, is two. Same here, is two. And four dots signify four words, is the same as. So you will read it as A is to B is the same as C is to D. Right? So you're basically saying A is to B and B is to, uh, C is to D is the same. All right. Now by the notation, you have A is to B is to C is the same as C is to D. Right? Now you have certain names for these. The ones on the outer are called as extremes for obvious reasons. And B and C that are inside are known as the means. So a very important property in proportions is that the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. So you're basically saying A into D is equal to B into C. Now, how this came about is you just convert this to fractions, right? A is to B is A by B and C is to D is C by D. So proportions basically say that both of these are equal. If both of these are equal, you just cross multiply. So take D on the side, B on the side. So you'll get AD is equal to BC. Another very important rule in proportions is known as the componendo and dividendo rule, right? This is the fanciest name you'll come across in your aptitude studies. So it basically says that if you have A by B is equal to C by D, right? That is the definition of a proportion. Then A plus B divided by A minus B is equal to C plus D divided by C minus D. This is a very important formula that you need to remember. All right, now with that intro, let's solve a simple sum. Problem one. Divide rupees 672 in the ratio 5 is to 3. This example is supposed to cement your understanding in ratios. So, suppose we've got to divide rupees 672 in the ratio 5 is to 3. That is what the sum says, right? So, let's assume that we have a gold disc. 
Now, realistically, you're not going to get any gold disc for rupees 672. So, now what we can do is, we have to divide it in the ratio of 5 is to 3. So, assume there is person A and there is person B. Right? So, B should get 3 and A should get 5. So, the ratio A to B should be 5 is to 3. Now, what I can do is, I can make 8 parts, right? 5 plus 3 and I can give 5 parts to A and 3 parts to B. That's way, uh, that's how they can get 5 is to 3, right? So what I'll do is, I will divide my disc into 8 parts, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, A should get 5 parts. So, these 5 parts, I'm going to give it to A. And the remaining blue parts, these 3 parts, I'm going to give it to B. So technically, they've got 5 parts is to 3 parts, which is the same ratio, 5 is to 3. So this is how I've divided 672 into 5 is to 3. Now let's see how to solve this up. All right, now we know that if we add the pieces, right, 5 pieces of A and 3 pieces of B, and we get it all together, we get the entire circle, the disc, that is equal to 672 rupees. So when you're solving the sum, you will work backwards, right? So now you have 5 is to 3, right? So 5x is to 3x, you can write, which is the same thing. Now, if I add 5x and 3x, that is a's part and b's part, I should get 672 rupees, right? So 5 plus 3 is 8x is equal to 672. So x is equal to 672 by 8, right? So 8 ones are, 8 eights are 64, 3 8 fours are. So x is equal to 84. Now, we know that a's part is 5x, and B's part is 3x. So A's part will be 5x will be 5 into 84. So 8 5 is 45, 8, 4, 5, okay, so 84 into 5, 20, 5 is 40, 42. Right? So 420 and B's part will be 3x. So it will be 3 into 84. So 84 into 3, 3 fours are 12, 8 into 24, 252. So 252, right? So these are the individual parts, what they should get in the ratio 5 is to 3. Now, just to make sure, you can just add it up, right? 420 plus 252, so 276. So 672 is what you began with. All right, so this is part one on lecture on ratios and proportions. If you found this lecture helpful, do like it, subscribe to my channel and share it among your friends. I'd also appreciate it if you share this on Facebook and help me reach out to as many students as possible. Cheers! Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get notification of any videos that I release. I make new videos every Thursday. Until then, spread the knowledge.